as you guys look at this, now again, when you're doing this, make sure you have them in descending order, right? The highest power is always listed first going down. So here you have x squared, here you have x squared. Those are both the degrees that are exactly the same. So my horizontal asymptote is just the leading coefficient of my numerator over the leading coefficient of my denominator. That's it. Not much math needs to be done. That's it. Vertical asymptote, we got to do again what we did before. You got to set the denominator equal to 0. Here I can factor out a 2x. Um, oh, now should I double check to make sure I don't have a asymptote here? I should probably factor these, right? Just to make sure. So if I factor out a, actually, you know what? I'm going to come, I'll come back to this. Let's solve this first, because that's a little bit easier, a little bit more difficult to factor. So now I can say x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 1. Okay, But I'm going to verify this, because I want to double check that, not, that one of these is not a factor of that. So I'm going to do that next when I find the x-intercept, right? Because the x-intercept, you just set the numerator equal to 0. So the first thing I notice is they all have a 3 in front. So I'm going to get the 3 out. And then I look to factor this to make sure that one of these asymptotes is not a whole. And then I realize that, uh-oh, I have a problem. This isn't factorable. Crap. So should I just say no, no x-intercepts? Should I just write no x-intercepts? Not factorable. No? Does it kind of sound like I'm trying to trick you? Yeah. Yeah, because I am. Just because something's not factorable doesn't mean it's not solvable. No. If it's non factorable and we need to solve a quadratic, then that means we need to apply the quadratic formula. Should I use this one or this one? It doesn't matter. Um, I would say that using this quadratic is easier. This 3 is just a scalar. So I would just divide it out. Okay, Get rid of it. It's just a scalar. It's not going to affect the zeros. So the quadratic formula, x is equal to opposite of b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. Now hopefully at this stage in the game, you can do a little mental math. Negative 1 squared is 1. OK, I'm just going to hold that up, negative 1. Negative 4 times 1 times negative 1 is going to be a positive 4. OK, 4 plus 1 is 5. So x is equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of 5 divided by 2. Is that a real number? So that means this graph actually does cross the x-axis at that real number. right? Do we know the decimal equivalent? No. Am I asking for a decimal equivalent? No. Right? There it is. Those are two x-intercepts. Now let's do the y-intercept, and let's hope that these, that's going to be as easier. So remember, the y-intercept is your constant over your constant. I have no constant here. Right? There's no just physical number. I could write a 0 there, though. right? So therefore, you'd see this is y is equal to negative 3 over 0, which means we do not have a y-intercept. All right. So let's go ahead and 